Hello, and welcome to this presentation, Getting Started with the RTB2000, Triggering. In this short presentation, we'll provide an introduction to oscilloscope triggering concepts and how to configure and use the different types of triggers on Rodian Schwartz RTB2000 series oscilloscopes. This presentation assumes a basic knowledge of how to operate the RTB2000. If you're new to the RTB, or if you'd like a brief refresher, you might want to watch the presentation, Getting Started with the RTB2000, Basic Operation, before beginning this presentation. As you should already know, modern digital storage oscilloscopes digitize input signals and convert them into sample values that are then processed and displayed on the screen. This process is normally started when a so-called trigger event occurs, and we'll spend most of the rest of this presentation explaining the different types of triggers on the RTB and how to configure them. The most common application for triggering is stabilizing a repeating waveform on the screen, by starting a new acquisition with each trigger event. Triggering can also be used when making a one-time or single-shot capture, and is also important in segmented memory applications. Please see the separate presentation on segmented memory if you'd like to learn more about how to use segmented memory on the RTB. Let's review the basic RTB trigger controls. The trigger button opens the trigger menu, and source is used to specify the source of the trigger signal. In most cases, this will be one of the RTB's analog channels, and the color of the key will match the color of the source channel. To start or stop a continuous or repeated acquisition, use Run Stop, which will illuminate green when running and red when stopped. The Single button is used to start a specified number of acquisitions and then stop. Many triggers are based on the level of the signal, and the trigger knob can be used to manually set these levels. Note that pressing the knob sets the level to 50% of the signal amplitude, which is often a good starting point. And when a trigger event occurs, the triggered light will flash green, although in many cases this will occur so quickly that the light will appear to be on continuously. On most oscilloscopes there are two trigger modes, Auto and Norm. In Normal mode, the scope only acquires a waveform if a trigger event occurs. Therefore, if there is no valid trigger event, no waveform is acquired, and only the last waveform, if any, is displayed on the screen. A timer showing trigger question mark and a number of seconds will also appear when there is no trigger. The force trigger button can be helpful in this case, since pressing it will manually trigger the scope and allow you to see any signals present, even if there's no valid trigger event. On the other hand, auto triggers the scope not just on a valid trigger event, but also automatically after a given time interval has elapsed, even if there is no valid trigger. This ensures that the screen is never blank or static, even if the trigger has not, yet, been properly configured. Please note that Auto doesn't automatically configure the trigger type, level, etc. It only specifies the conditions required for triggering. If you're looking for a way to automatically configure a trigger, the Auto Set button will try to configure an edge trigger automatically using the current waveform. There are four different trigger sources available on the RTB2000. The most common sources are one of the four analog channels. Another possible trigger source are any of the 16 digital or logic channels. In some cases, it can be useful to have an external trigger signal, which is connected to the RTB using a separate BNC connector on the front of the instrument. Note that external triggering is only available for trigger types edge and video. We'll discuss these shortly. There's also a serial bus trigger that can be used when triggering on various serial protocols. Please see the separate presentations on serial protocols to learn more about this trigger type. The setup menu is used to define which actions, if any, should be taken when a trigger event occurs. These include generating a pulse out on the aux out connector, playing a sound, taking a screenshot, saving the actual waveform data itself, or saving a reference waveform. These actions can also be combined. For example, the RTB could take a screenshot and play a sound when a trigger occurs. The RTB2000 supports seven different types of triggers. The first five of these, edge, width, timeout, line, and video, will be discussed in detail in this presentation. There are also two additional triggers that we won't be covering in this presentation. A pattern trigger, which is used with the mixed signal or logic analyzer feature of the RTB, and a serial bus trigger that can be used when performing serial decodes. Please see the separate presentations on each of these last two topics to learn more about triggering in these applications.
We'll start with edge triggering, which is the most common type of oscilloscope trigger. An edge trigger occurs when the signal passes a specified trigger level with a specified direction or slope. These directions can be a rising edge, a falling edge, or either a rising or falling edge. Here's an example of an edge trigger. The trigger is set to a rising edge and the trigger level, marked with the TL flag, is set to 1 volt. The trigger point is shown in the trace as a small yellow diamond, as well as by the yellow triangle marker at the top of the screen. Another very common type of trigger is a width trigger, in which triggering is based on the width of a pulse. This is most often used to trigger on things such as very short pulses or glitches. There are a number of different sets of parameters that can be used to trigger on the width of a pulse. For example, we could trigger on pulses that are shorter than a given time or longer than a given time. We could trigger on pulses with an exact width, plus or minus some tolerance value, and we could also trigger on pulses that are outside of a given range. Note that in all cases, a threshold voltage level must be set. This defines the minimum amplitude required for a waveform to be considered a pulse, and also is the point at which the width of the pulse is measured. In this example, we're triggering on pulses less than 100 microseconds long. With a width trigger set to 100 microseconds, the RTB doesn't trigger until it sees the shorter 50 microsecond pulse shown here. Don't forget to set an appropriate threshold value, here, 400 millivolts. Setting an improper threshold value is the most common cause of problems when using a width trigger. A timeout trigger is somewhat similar to a width trigger, the difference being that a timeout trigger occurs if the signal does not cross a specified threshold within a specified time. Another way of saying this is that we trigger when something should be changing but isn't, such as a lockup on a data bus. A timeout trigger can therefore occur for two different conditions when the signal stays high or above a threshold, and when the signal stays low or below a threshold longer than it should. Let's look at an example of a timeout trigger. Here we define this trigger by the signal staying high for more than 50 microseconds, with high defined as 350 millivolts or more. As we can see, the trigger occurred when the signal stayed above 350 millivolts for more than 50 microseconds. A line trigger, also sometimes called a mains trigger, triggers on the AC line or mains voltage, which usually has a frequency of either 50 or 60 Hz, depending on geography. The line trigger is used to help detect issues that are related to the frequency of the AC main supply, that is, problems which occur at 50 or 60 Hz intervals. Here, we see bursts of noise on our waveform, and it's clear that the noise is related to the positive peaks in the AC mains voltage. A line trigger causes signals in sync with the line voltage to become stationary on the display. This type of trigger is also very easy to configure since it doesn't have any settings. Keep in mind that a line trigger is based on the AC mains voltage being used to power the oscilloscope. It's completely unrelated to the waveforms on any of the scope channels. If we look at this waveform with a standard edge trigger, it's difficult to draw any conclusions about the source of these noise bursts. However, if we switch our trigger type to line, it's easy to see that the noise bursts are synchronized with the AC line or main voltage. The bursts of noise remain stationary on the screen, even though the waveform is moving. Another somewhat less common trigger type is the video trigger. This type of trigger starts an acquisition on the sync signals or pulses, here shown in red, that are used to mark the start of each scan line in a video signal. The RTB supports a variety of both standard definition as well as high-definition video formats. We won't be going into detail on these formats in this presentation. To configure a video trigger, three steps are required. Selecting a video standard and the polarity, deciding which lines or fields to trigger on, and entering any specific settings. Let's take a look at an example. Here, the RTP is triggering on an NTSC video signal. If we zoom in on the first part of the signal, we can clearly see and measure different parts of the signal, such as the so-called front porch, sync tip, and color burst. Before we finish this presentation, let's take a couple of minutes to go over some additional trigger parameters that can be helpful in certain circumstances. These are trigger coupling, hold off, hysteresis, and noise or HF rejection.
Trigger coupling determines what processing, if any, is done on the trigger signal. The RTB supports three types of trigger coupling. In DC mode, the trigger signal remains unchanged, and in AC mode, any DC component is removed from the trigger. AC trigger coupling can be useful when probing a signal that has an unknown DC offset. The third option, called LF, or low frequency reject, uses a 15 kHz high pass filter to remove low frequency components from a trigger signal. This should only be used for very high frequency signals. It's important to remember that trigger coupling is not the same as input coupling. A DC coupled input signal could have an AC coupled trigger. Next, let's discuss trigger hold off. If we configured a rising edge trigger, the RTB would normally trigger on each rising edge, as shown here. A trigger hold off is a user defined time after a trigger event during which the RTB will not trigger. Trigger hold off is primarily used when triggering on waveforms that contain multiple trigger locations in a single cycle. After we define a trigger hold off time, as shown, our scope will only trigger on the first pulse of each three pulse sequence. Let's look at an example. We'd like to trigger on the first pulse in this three pulse waveform, but get an unstable result with a standard edge trigger. If we enable trigger hold off with a properly configured hold off time, we're now able to trigger only on the start of the three pulse waveform. Trigger hysteresis is available for many trigger types. Hysteresis is used to prevent false triggering on noisy signals and provide a more stable trigger. Hysteresis can be represented as a region or box that's defined by the trigger and hysteresis levels. In order to be considered a valid trigger, the signal must cross the whole box in one direction. In this example, the first crossing of the trigger level is a valid trigger event, but the second crossing is not. On the RTB, hysteresis can be configured as small, medium, or large regions. If we changed our region in this example to small, the second trigger crossing now becomes a valid trigger event. Let's look at an example. Because of noise, the timeout trigger is unstable when only a small hysteresis value is used. Changing from a smaller to a larger hysteresis value prevents the RTB from triggering due to this fluctuating noise, and the result is a stable waveform on the RTB screen. In addition to hysteresis, the RTB has two additional features that can be used to avoid undesired triggering. The first of these is noise reject, which prevents triggers caused by noise oscillation. The other feature is HF, or high frequency reject, which adds a 5 kHz low pass filter to the trigger signal path. This removes high frequency noise and other spurious signals that could lead to undesired triggering. Note that only one of these features can be active at any time. In this example, the noise on our sinusoidal input signal makes it difficult to get a stable edge trigger. However, enabling noise reject removes the noise from the trigger signal and provides a stable waveform on the screen without removing or altering the waveform itself. Let's end with a brief summary. Triggering is one of the most fundamental systems in all oscilloscopes and is important because the trigger defines the start of an acquisition. The RTB2000 supports many different types of triggers. The most common trigger types are edge, width, and timeout triggers, whereas less common types include line, video, and both serial and pattern triggers. Generally speaking, triggers are configured by defining either an amplitude threshold and or a time threshold. In addition to these parameters, triggers may also incorporate hold-off, hysteresis, different coupling types, and noise slash HF rejection. This concludes our presentation, Getting Started with the RTB2000, Triggering. If you'd like to learn more about oscilloscopes, triggering, or the RTB2000, please see the links in the video description. Thanks for watching.